This is our uh, passive infrared detector. Let's do a walk around the whole system. This is the front cover. Comes off and there's the actual detector underneath there. Also notice that uh, this is where the markings are for the uh, power, ground, and output. So it's not on the other side of the board where the pins actually are. Okay, let's go look at the back side. On the back side there's sensitivity and distance adjustments and so on. I don't mess with these. Uh, the pie will take care of most of the stuff I need to do. And on the back here are the actual pins. The black is the ground, the power is the white, and the gray I have used as the output. And that's it. Again, there's not much to this side of the board. On the Pi, we simply have, uh, you can see, we have pin 1, 3, 5, 7 is what I'm using as my output, and the next pin is ground, so 9 is ground. On the other side, I am using the 5 volt power from the Pi, which is pin 2. You can see pin 1's on this side, pin 2's over here, and the, that is what is uh, powering this device. I tried using the 3.3 volts from the Pi, but it uh, does not work. So, okay, well that's it for the walk around. Let's go look at the software. This is our software. Let's take a look over here. I've got it running. And as you can see, we'll let it calm down here for a second. When something warm passes in front of it, the input goes high and goes low after a while. And then it detects me again and goes high and then no detection goes low. So let's take a look at the software that's making this happen. We're using Python 3, we're using a, a PIR, P-I-R, passive infrared. That means it's not sending out any light, it's just detecting the heat from a body, from an animal, a person, what have you. And we're using a single input pin, that's pin 7 on the board, and we're using a ground pin 6. Uh, I'm going to use polling. This software is going to use polling as opposed to an interrupt. There are several other things we're going to do with this uh, because uh, the, it has a lot of versatility. If you just wanted to turn a light on and off, for example, or detect something, you don't really need the Pi. But this is a good first step. This is the first thing you need to know before you go on. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. So the PIR power is 5 volts, it's pin 2, I tried with 3.3 volts from the Pi, it does not work, so you have to use the 5 volt source from the Pi. We're going to import the RPI GPIO, so this is so we can use the pins, we're going to import time so we can use a time delay. We're going to declare our input pin as pin 7, we're going to use the board numbering scheme, and then we're going to set up pin 7 as an input. So let's get down to the interesting part. This is the program that actually does stuff. This is the part of the program that, that makes things happen. So this could be an infinite loop right here, but I do it just because I don't want it to run forever. Uh, in my case, I just did from 0 to 500, but again, you could do an infinite loop. You could just say, well, y is true or something like that. Then we're going to say if GPIO input pin, and this means if it's true, uh, which means it's high, it's 3.3 volts, it's equal to 1, but however you want to say that, but it's high. Then we're going to print the message detection input high. We saw that over here, up here. Otherwise, we're going to print no detection, which is what you see down here. And we're just going to keep checking and checking. And this is why it's called polling. We're going to keep polling the device uh, until we see something, or until it runs out of time in my case. And when that's all done, we're going to fall through and we're going to do the cleanup. We're going to put the GPIO pins back where they were. And then we're going to print done so we know that it, it concluded normally. But again, if you do an infinite loop, you won't need that. Okay, well that's it. Uh, hope you found it useful and interesting in your Pi programming experiences.